Hi friends, today I am going to take you through a holiday themed negative painting with watercolor. So you will need a stencil and some paper and your brushes and watercolor. First thing you want to do is wet down your paper evenly and then we're going to apply a very thin light layer of a toasty brown. Once you completely cover your paper and let that dry, you will take a stencil. I'm using a mini cookie cutter and you want to place some of these around your paper. I'm using a five by five sheet of paper here. The smaller the size that you go with, the easier this will be if you're trying this for the first time. And using a larger stencil will also make this a little bit easier on you. Just use light pencil lines to mark this off. You want to be able to see where to place the paint without having it show through the paint too much. And then mix up a couple of browns so that you get a nice medium brown. And then pick up a little bit of extra water on your brush, go back into that mixture, and start painting. I'm using a size 12 round brush here. You want to have a brush that gives you a nice mixture of being able to get into detail. So this round brush has a nice fine point on it, which is great. And then you also want a brush that is large enough that you can cover these in-between areas relatively quickly so that you're working with the paint while it's still wet. You can also tape off a border for yourself. This is washi tape to tape off a halfings border all the way around the paper and I've tagged all the supplies that I'm using in the video description below. Negative watercolor painting is a powerful technique that adds unique depth and dimension to your artwork. It focuses on painting around the subject rather than filling it in directly. And by creating darker values in the background, this approach allows your subject to emerge naturally from the paper by giving your subject a subtle layered look. No matter what size brush you're using, short strokes around the outline of the gingerbread will make your life a lot easier and will give you more control with your brush. Make sure to let that layer dry completely and then come back in with your stencil and you want to scatter three or four more gingerbread around your paper. Imagine that you're placing these under the first layer of gingerbread that you did. So the pencil lines will be on the deepest brown that we have on the paper so far. Don't have any of the pencil line cross over the top layer of gingerbread. The beauty of using pencil, of course, is that if you do accidentally place a line where you don't want it, you can just go back and erase it and then go back in and do what you intended to do in the first place. As you place your gingerbread, alternate the angle that you're using so that it looks like they're scattered over the paper and they're not all facing the same direction. Then you're going to pick up a little bit more of your brown this one will have a bit of a darker value than the previous layer we did. So you either want to have a bit more pigment added into your mixture or less water on your brush. And then you're going to work your way around not only the first layer that you did, but also the second layer of gingerbread that you just traced out on your paper. So this is where the negative painting aspect comes in. You're going into the negative space and painting around your subject. This type of technique really appeals to artists who like patience and mindfulness in their process. So if you enjoy a slower, more focused method of painting, this will probably be a great technique for you and you'll find it very relaxing and meditative. Don't worry if you don't feel that way right out of the gate. This type of technique does take a bit of practice to get the hang of. Using a stencil definitely helps make it easier. As you get used to this style of painting, if you do enjoy it, you can also come in and freehand your subject. A lot of people like to do this technique with leaves. You would be able to just sketch those out on your paper 
you wouldn't have to use a stencil. That simply makes it much more approachable when you are just getting started with this technique. Once you have wrapped up this layer, be sure to let your paper dry completely. This is especially important when you're using 100% cotton paper, which will make your life much easier with watercolor. It's also very absorbent and holds on to a lot of water. So you want to either let it completely air dry, or if you want to keep going with your painting, you can always use a hair dryer to speed up the process. Then you'll go into the next layer. So as we did with the second layer of gingerbread, you'll be coming in and making a third layer. Look for open areas that don't have any gingerbread in them just yet. And you'll be tracing just the parts that would be underneath your first and second layer of gingerbread. Think three layers down as if you had three layers of gingerbread cookies in front of you. As we get into these smaller sections, you'll probably find it easier to switch to a smaller brush. I'm using a size two brush here, and this is quite narrow. It's a size two round brush and has a teensy little point that makes it a lot easier to get into the smaller spaces that we're working with for the last couple of stages. We're using progressively darker values of paint here. So again, you want to mix up your paint mixture with a little bit more pigment in it and use less water on your brush. This will mean that you're dipping your brush back into your pigment a little bit more often than before because your brush will dry out a little bit more quickly and that will give you that nice darker value that'll really start to show off the depth and dimension that is the hallmark of negative watercolor painting. Let that layer dry completely, and then we will go into our very last layer. At this point, the pencil lines will be pretty hard to see. So what you might wanna do is, as you do each pencil line, go in and use the darkest value, the deepest darkest value on the negative space. So you'll trace a line, and then you're going to come back in with the darkest color and go in between all your gingerbread. You're using this layer to fill in the very last of the negative space. Anything that isn't gingerbread should get this very deep dark rich brown. And then we will go into some fun embellishments on the very top layer.
If you like the look of your painting at this stage, you can stop and leave it here. Or you can continue on with me to embellish the very top layer. I'm using a waterproof black pen here. This is a Micron 03 size. And you can use this to trace around the outline of your very lightest gingerbread. This will give them a little bit more definition. This pen is also waterproof once it's dry, and we're going to use a little bit more watercolor. After you've completed that outline, go back over each of your gingerbread and add three circular buttons and then two eyes connected by a smile. And then we're going to add a little bit more watercolor. We'll start off with blue and then we're going to place that in the top button for each of the gingerbread. Make sure to clean off your brush completely in between each of these colors. We'll go into a golden yellow next for the middle button and then pick up a red for the very last button that will really pop. After you've finished with those colors, rinse off your brush and we'll give them each brown eyes. So mix up a little bit more of that brown. We'll keep this kind of a medium brown. I thought about doing a different color for the eyes, but then I thought it might look a little strange. Let me know if you would have chosen something different here. After you've finished painting those, be sure to remove your tape to reveal those gorgeous borders. My name is Sarah, and I hope to see you soon for another tutorial.